Jackson Radio Show. Welcome back, everybody. Kevin Jackson, the author of Race Pimping, the Multi-Trillion Dollar Business of Liberalism. And let me tell you, while I was in New York hosting Fox and Friends over the weekend, I will tell you, I witnessed it firsthand. You want to know what they were talking about? How much more money it was going to take to protect the Boston, the New York City Marathon, than it did in previous years. All the news was, uh, well, we've got extra snipers out. We've got extra police deployed. And so on and so forth. That's what they were talking about. What is terror costing us in this century? People talk about, you know, leftism and this war on terror as if it's some, you know, something that's offshore. Like it's in it's in Europe and the war on terror is being fought in the Middle East and a few countries like France and Germany. No, it's being fought here. Going through the airport with this fake idea of security is laughable. It took an hour longer for me to process through the airport in both directions because of the terror attack in New York that had happened earlier in the week. Longer. And I don't know what money gets allocated. But I've, I've lamented that on every ticket you purchase, there's a homeland security thing, and we're paying for this false sense of security that got eight people killed in New York and 12 people mortally wounded. I mean, they're, these people are going to be dealing with this. One lady I heard just lost both legs. So it's changing people's lives. The, the cost of terror has changed the lives of, what, 52 people or whatever the number was in uh, Las Vegas and hundreds of others who were wounded. And you know what? The Republicans are too dumb to bring these people back to go talk to those over 500 people who were wounded in that attack and see how their lives were changed forever for a guy who's an avowed Democrat who worked on the Hillary Clinton campaign and who shot and killed 50 plus people and wounded almost 500 or roughly 500 others. Let's go trot these people out and let the world see what's what the remnants are from the anger and the hate that's being bred in these people. That's right. It's being bred. I talk often about the hatred being taught to young blacks to hate white people on sight. No reason. We know of the hatred being taught by the Muslim community, kids that go, I hate America, burning the American flag. They don't even know why. We help more people around the globe. We conservative Americans do this and know the our our uh, uh, reward, if you want to call it that, is for us to be demonized and hated. So I'll give you a good example. You've got. A Muslim who ran over eight people, 12, 20 people total, killed eight, wounded 12 others. More, I mean, just in ways you don't even want to think about. Lady lost her legs. And what does the left do? They come to us and they tell us, you know what? He's OK. He, he, he was radicalized in America. It's you know, it's not his fault. They tell us Uzbekistan wasn't on Trump's travel ban. See? <laughs> That's their excuse. Let me ask you, let me put it a a way you might understand it more clearly. What if a Tea Party person, in the name of the Tea Party, like if he yelled out, Holy Lipton Tea, and he drove a Home Depot truck over 20 people, killing eight and wounding 12 others, the way that these others have been wounded, where somebody loses their legs, would they be, would the left be coming to the defense of us? Would they say, look, they were radicalized when they came to the big city or they got radicalized when they went to the country. Would they care when the Tea Party member that did that was radicalized or would they go, look at that Tea Party. We tried to tell you racism. They'd look at every angle. We'd know the nationality of every single person, why it was done. Let me tell you who got killed in that attack by this Muslim in New York City when he ran over these folks. You want to know who got killed? A bunch of Christians. You want to know who got killed in that attack at the church outside of San Antonio, Texas? A bunch of Christians. We'll get to that in a bit. So, I'm just floored at the level of hypocrisy that the left, and by the way, the predictability. 
because we all know they're going to blame the gun. The new church shooting where Christians are targeted. Can you imagine for the record if this were a mosque? I want you to think about whenever you think about the news cycle and what's going on there. So a church gets shot up. Okay. Blah, blah, blah. Now, what if it were a mosque? An atheist walked into a church and killed a bunch of people. Dozens. Now, I want you to think if a Christian had walked into a mosque and killed dozens of Muslims. What will we be talking about? Will we be talking about the guns? Yep. But we would be talking about all kinds of other elements. We'd be talking about uh, the religious Islamophobia. We'd be talking about xenophobia. We'd be talking about racism. You name it. We know a lot about this shooter now. He's an atheist. They tell us he was going after his in-laws. So not only is he an atheist and he has no core belief in any system, a system of judgment and accountability, which would lead him to go shoot up a church. He's also vindictive. He's evil and mean spirited. He can't just say my relationship with this person is done or my in-laws made my life miserable, but I no longer have to deal with them because they're, you know, I I don't know. I think they were divorced or whatever. The the, him and the, the woman. If I can presume it's a woman, because, you know, that could get me in trouble. But this guy was in need of anger management. You remember that uh, Lawrence O'Donnell clip we played where the guy can't he's got a problem with his earpiece and he's just on a tirade. That's the way liberals live. Liberals live leftist. They live on the edge, the hairy edge of reason. They don't have any reason, any reasoning powers, no logic. And so they live on the hairy edge of it because they back themselves into a philosophical and ideological corner and they're mad every time they're confronted that they can't, they can't rationalize it. They're like children. Everything ends in a tantrum with a two-year-old or a three-year-old. They don't sit down and go, you know, mother, I was thinking the other day about that, that bit of a tantrum that I threw. I was wrong for that. Yes, mother. I apologize. They don't do that. They don't have that ability. Trust me. I was in the thick of them. People that think at Fox, it's so liberal. I was on outnumbered. Two of the women on there were absolute leftist. Absolute, utter leftist. They're not, these aren't conservatives we're debating. Marie Harf is such a waste of space. I guess they brought her on because, um, you know, it's tough to find liberals that can, you know, put two sentences together without sounding like a monkey. But because I don't get it. Anyway, this guy's an atheist going after his in-laws, needs anger management, got this gun that he used illegally. And for the record, just like leftists love illegals coming into the country, if you think they love them, they love illegal guns. They love them. The only thing they love more than illegal guns is when somebody uses them in a crime. So leftists and then go trot out their whole, you know, the whole narrative of the gun did it. The gun is evil. Look at that evil gun. That's the way they work. I offer to you folks that leftism is our biggest problem in America. It's bigger than terrorism, global warming, BLM, Antifa, the national debt the overspending, you name it. It's bigger than all of it. It's costing us trillions of dollars. If you got rid of leftists, you would, you, your crime rate would drop exponentially. I'm talking 900%. It would go down 90%. You know what I'm saying? I mean, you'd have a reduction across the board. All these laws that we have, you, it would be practically utopian if we got rid of leftists. You wouldn't have acts of terror. You'd have reasonable dialogue and discourse. You could talk about issues. We'd be a peaceful, much more, uh, I don't know, uh, happy society without leftists. I, I know crime would, as I said, would go down tremendously, but other things, aggravation would drop. The aggravation factor. 
Can you imagine kids actually learning, people going to work and enjoying life again? You know, leftists never question the the quality of life in other countries. They're constantly questioning the quality of life here as if America's so bad. You know, they they gleefully remind us that no, no, no. When Muslims come over here and then they commit an act of crime in America, they weren't radical before they got here. They got here and they noticed how bad things were and they, then they became upset. That's the narrative. It's pretty pathetic. When we come back, I want to talk about radicalization. What are, what are the roots of radicalization? Who's responsible for radicalization? Because I know the answer and I bet you do too. Kevin Jackson on the Black Sphere Radio Network. Do you owe back taxes to the IRS or state? The secret to avoiding the IRS nightmare is to seek professional representation. My friends at Security Tax Associates provide the most cost-effective and ethical representation in the industry while helping to avoid seizures, levies, and wage garnishments. Security Tax Associates is here to ensure that the appropriate steps are taken to permanently eliminate any possibility of future tax burdens once and for all. For a free, no-obligation consultation, contact Security Tax Associates, 844-779-4177. That's 844-779-4177. 844-779-4177 or visit them at securitytaxassociates.com. 